morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. We are waiting for a few more dignitaries and attendees to join in as well. We will begin shortly. Please bear with us. Thank you for your patience. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Naina Acharya, your host for today. I welcome you to the Business Enterprises of Tomorrow 2020 conference, which is hosted by Dun & Bradstreet and American Express Banking Corporation. The event is presented by AWS in association with iTelligence. As all of you are aware, this event will see the launch of two publications, Leading SMEs of India 2020 and Leading Mid Corporates of India 2020. Before we delve any further, I would like to set some context with respect to this, the launch of these two publications. The COVID-19 pandemic has gravely affected the SMEs as well as the mid-corporates in India, who, by the way, contribute to 90% of the Indian businesses. Needless to say, the R revival basically means a revival of the Indian economy as well as a realization of the government's mission of creating an Atmanirbhar Bharat. Since these companies spell the future of the Indian economy, this event is aptly named Build Business Enterprises of Tomorrow 2020. Dun and Bradstreet as an organization has always been a forerunner in providing actionable analytical data and research that empowers businesses to take strategic decisions. Hence, in proud support of this endeavor, Dun and Bradstreet has partnered with American Express Banking Corporation and has created two publications, the Leading SMEs of India 2020 and the Leading Mid-Corporates of India 2020. These publications will showcase the critical role and capture the pulse of the SMEs and the mid-size companies in India and will also share an outlook of this industry's future. These will be made accessible digitally to the CXOs of leading corporate, MSMEs, mid-corporates and the BFSI segment as well as the government ministries to help shape a common perspective of the SMEs and the mid-size companies. In a nutshell, these publications are basically a compendium of those who want updated information about the high-performing SMEs as well as the mid-corporates in India. I would like to take the opportunity to thank all our partners who have helped us bring this conference to reality. Our title partner, American Express Banking Corporation, our presenting partner, AWS, our principal partner, iTelligence, our life insurance partner, LIC of India, our co-partners, William Textiles, Crayon, and CDE Asia and this event is supported by NSIC and needless to say all our publication partners. Eminent speakers, dignitaries, partners and friends, let's take a pledge today in scripting the rise of Atmanirbhar Bharat. We have an eminent lineup of speakers today and I'm just waiting to listen to their views. In addition to that, we request all our viewers to share their views and raise their opinions and their voice with respect to what is it that they would want to help create an Atmanirbhar Bharat. And in this bargain, please make sure that you utilize social media to post in your views. Do not forget to use our respective hashtags for the SME as well as the mid-corporates. That's hashtag DNBSME2020 and hashtag DNBMC2020 while posting your opinions. Your opinions matter to us. So let's move on to the first speaker of the event. I would like to invite a leader par excellence to commence the launch of the proceedings. I would like to invite Mr. Julian Prower. Mr. Julian joined Dun & Bradstreet in 1985 as a member of the European Technology Organization. He has held positions of increasing leadership responsibility in technology, country leadership, human resources and business operations, often requiring international and global mobility. 
He is responsible for supporting the development and execution of the company's international strategy to accelerate growth across markets. He also serves as the chairman of the Dun & Bradstreet UK and India boards. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause to our Chief Operations Officer, International Dun & Bradstreet, Mr. Julian Prower. Sir, I request you to deliver the welcome address. Very pleasure to welcome Sri Nitin Gudkari, Honourable Union Minister for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises and Road Transport and Highways, Government of India. Ms. Meika Chopra, Country Business Head, Global Commercial Services, American Express Banking Corporation. Mr. B. Rakavanjan, Head of SMB Segment, Amazon Internet Services, PPT Limited, India, South Asia. And Mr. Anil Rao, Chief Executive Officer, NTT Data, Business Solutions, India, Private Limited. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dunn & Bradstreet, I thank all of you for joining us this morning. I'd like to warmly welcome you to the digital release of our publication, Leading SMEs of India 2020 and Leading Big Corporates of India 2020. Collaboration has always been at the core of our business. Throughout Dunn & Bradstreet's 179 year history, we have shared our expertise and repository of business information to help countless enterprises mitigate risk and make faster, more intelligent decisions. We've worked tirelessly to equip small businesses across the world with the right tools that would help them grow and become large enterprises. Small and medium sized enterprises make up the largest area of business in most economies and they play a pivotal role in job creation and economic development. Some of the statistics provided by the World Bank further amplify this reality. SMEs represent about 90% of businesses and more than 50% of employment worldwide. Formal SMEs contribute up to 40% of the GDP in emerging economies. Governments around the world have made the development of SMEs one of their top priorities, recognizing they create seven out of 10 of every jobs in the markets globally. By 2030, 600 million new jobs will be needed to absorb the growing global workforce and SMEs are expected to play a major role in this area. Our extensive research and business reports indicate an improvement in business activities of SMEs across the world. However, the business bankruptcy and payment delinquencies across sectors has become a growing cause of concerns for SMEs worldwide. In India, we noted in Dun & Bradstreet's most recent business optimism index survey, that optimism amongst the businesses, especially SMEs have gone up to 68% in Q4 2020, that's October through December. Whereas for all businesses, including large companies, the overall business optimism has increased by around 57%. These improvements are mainly driven by the upturn of sentiment in the manufacturing sector, given the most of the economic activities have now restarted there. Donald Bradstreet is working very closely with Indian MSMEs for over the past two decades, providing business intelligence to help them grow and thrive. Our constant endeavor to help SMEs in India increase their visibility, expand access to global markets, find potential customers, uncover new suppliers and channel partners, manage risk and identify growth opportunities. We will keep working towards making sure that micro, small and medium enterprises of today become the large enterprises of tomorrow. Coming back to leading today's proceedings, I'd like to congratulate all the companies being featured in the publication, Leading SMEs of India 2020 and Leading Mid Corporates of India 2020. As we inch closer towards the year end, I wish all of you the very best for the future. Finally, I'd like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Sri Nitin Gadkari for sharing his valuable time with us today. I'm sure that all of us are eager to listen to his perspectives on the Indian economic and business landscape and the roadmap for economic revival of small and mid-sized businesses. I also take this opportunity to thank our titled partners, American Express, presenting partners, AWS, and principal partners, iTelligence. We also sincerely thank the NSIC for having supported this initiative. I hope you find this event insightful and thank you all again for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Julian Prava, for the wonderful welcome address. We are honored to have you with us today. We now move on to our next distinguished speaker. With over three decades of experience, he's an execution-focused senior leader with a strong background. Currently, he's responsible for Dun & Bradstreet's go-to-market strategy and business operations. Prior to joining Dun & Bradstreet, he worked with Rabo Equity Advisors as the managing director. 
Over the years, he worked extensively in financial services including mergers and acquisitions, equity and debt financing and private equity placement and that too at a global level. He held various leadership positions in various global organizations like Deloitte, HSBC, UBS, Bearings, Citibank among others. Please put your hands together ladies and gentlemen for our next esteemed speaker, Mr. Avinash Gupta, Managing Director, India, Dun & Bradstreet. Sri Nitin Gadkari ji, Honorable Union Minister for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises and Road Transport and Highways, the Government of India. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dun & Bradstreet, I thank all of you for joining us today for the digital release of our publications, Leading SMEs of India 2020, the Leading Mid-Corporates of India 2020, and the launch event, Dun & Bradstreet, American Express, Banking Corp, Business Enterprises of Tomorrow 2020. As you all have witnessed, the COVID-19 outbreak has thrown everyday life and businesses completely off guard. Globally, the situation has led to tectonic shifts in customer behavior, disrupted supply chains, and immensely dented cash flows. It goes without saying that small and medium-sized businesses have had to bear a bigger brunt because of this pandemic. While the government has introduced several measures and initiatives to support businesses, and help stage an economic revival, businesses themselves will have to adapt to the next normal and gear up for a quick resurgence as the situation starts to show signs of improvement. SMEs and mid-corporates will need to play a dominant role in this revival. Therefore, we think it would be apt to label SMEs and mid-corporates as the business enterprises of tomorrow. The government has set a target for India to become a US dollar 5 trillion economy by fiscal year 2025. In this, the government has envisaged that the SMEs will contribute to 50% of the GDP of the country. To achieve this, MSMEs will have to contribute 75% of the incremental GDP growth between fiscal year 19 and fiscal year 25. This offers an immense growth potential for the SMEs and to realize this, they should be provided with an enabling ecosystem to accelerate their growth going forward. Dun & Bradstreet India has been engaged with SMEs over the years to understand the issues and challenges that they specifically face. The library of responses we have now compiled covers thousands of SMEs over several years. However, the problems they cite have not changed. Of the many problems, we believe that access to finance and capital is the most critical challenge facing this particular sector. When we talk about access to capital, while banks and financial institutions have previously focused on high value and low risk large companies, there is an increasing consensus around the world that the MSME segment can be served well and on a profitable basis. This is corroborated by our research in this sector. The minority of Indian micro enterprises do have access to external capital. Report a ROCE, return on capital employed of 19%, compared to only 2% of the micro enterprises that do not have access to capital. This is a MSME problem that can be solved and solved on a profitable basis by the players serving this sector. COVID-19 has given a huge opportunity to India and the MSME sector is set to benefit from this. Supply chain disruption created by COVID-19 in the world markets have created a space for the localization of the production ecosystem globally. We believe that the government's thrust towards localization will benefit specifically the SME sectors in India. These surely are testing times for all of us, but we need to remember that SMEs are the backbone of our country and we need to create an enabling environment for them to survive 
and thrive so that we can achieve our goal of a $5 trillion economy for India. Coming back to today's proceedings, this year both these publications combined provide listings of more than 10,000 leading small and medium businesses in India. Each of these publications also provide detailed profiles of high performing small and medium businesses called the Select 500. These are companies which have shown consistent performance over the year, past years i.e. specifically from fiscal 2017 to 2019. These companies have shown high degree, high degree of resiliency for better growth prospects going forward as well. In fact, I would term these businesses as the benchmark setters of success for the SME community. I would like to congratulate all the companies being featured in the SME, leading SMEs India 2020, leading mid corporates of India 2020. We wish all of them the very best for their future. Before we close, we wish to extend our gratitude to Sri Nitin Gadkari ji for having graced our event today. We are sure that all of us are keen to listen to his perspectives, unique perspectives on the MSME landscape and India's roadmap for economic revival going forward. We would also like to thank all our esteemed dignitaries, Ms. Megha Chopra of American Express Banking Corporation, Mr. B. Raghavendran from Amazon Internet Services and Mr. Anil Rao, Chief Executive Officer, NTT Data Business Solutions India for partnering with us and contributing to the success of this virtual conference. Thank you once again. Thank you, Mr. Ravinash Gupta. I must say that the insights that you shared in your keynote were very valuable and we are looking forward to seeing what the publication has in store for us in terms of additional information on SMEs and mid corporates. Thank you very much, sir. With this now, I would like to invite our next speaker for the day. And she is quite an influential speaker, I must say. She is the country business head of Global Commercial Services, American Express Banking Corporation in India, as a member of the country executive committee with 18 years of experience in top financial organizations like Citibank, Standard Chartered and Ernest & Young. She brings immense expertise and value in the commercial banking segment. While she was at Citibank, she led the organization's relationship with Fortune 500 companies as head transaction banking in Northern India and spearheaded the digital transformation in the business of India. While she was with Standard Chartered Bank, she set up their middle market business in North and East India. As a woman of substance, she played an integral role in advanced diversity and inclusion initiatives in the workspace. She also devoted her spare time working with NGOs that support health, education and environmental program. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our next speaker for the day, Ms. Megha Chopra, Country Business Head, Global Commercial Services, American Express Banking Corporation. Thank you, Mr. Julian Prower and Mr. Avinash Gupta for setting the context for this event. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the digital launch of Leading SMEs and Mid-Corporates of India 2020. I'm Megha Chopra, Country Business Head of American Express for Global Commercial Payments. American Express is a global leader in commercial payments. We partner with small, mid, and large companies across the globe. We offer a wide range of tailored expense management solutions. They help companies like you to manage and monitor everyday business expenses, travel and entertainment expenses, and vendor payments. We also help corporates digitize their collection journeys and help them take advantage of this digital boom that is accelerating in the B2B space today. MSMEs have been a very strong area of focus for American Express. Due to the invaluable contribution, this sector has made to the socioeconomic development of our country. With 30% contribution to India's GDP, 50% of country's exports, and more than 11 crore jobs, it is rightly called the backbone of Indian economy. While the pandemic has not even spared big legacy corporations from feeling the economic blow, MSMEs are even more susceptible to market forces that have been impacted by this crisis. While the government has announced various relief packages like the Atmanirbhar package to help the revival and future growth of this sector, we strongly believe that MSMEs today have an opportunity to reboot their operations, reimagine their business models, and gear up for the new normal. So how can you manage your business better in a post-COVID economy? First of all, 
Today, MSMEs need to differentiate between liquidity and solvency. Let's take an example. Say a small scale manufacturer supplies electrical parts to multiple top quality buyers with elongated payment terms. While he enjoys favorable demand and good top line, a longer collection cycle stretches the cash flows. What the small business needs is temporary funding to meet this cash flow crunch rather than a long term financing or complex options. Also, the solutions of financing need to be simple, fast to implement, and scalable. You cannot actually deploy multiple options when you have multiple buyers. In this world of digital transformation, it is possible to generate liquidity using new age digital options. For example, MSMEs can provide cards as a payment option to their buyers. This is simple, will help accelerate cash from these receivables, and also continue to provide payment term flexibility to their buyers. So it is a win-win situation. Amex serves over 14 million card members in over 200 countries and has direct buyer and supplier relationships that help to create such unique payment journeys. This global and local presence gives us a unique advantage in B2B payments, and we can help SMEs create customized digital ecosystems for creating liquidity which is something very, very important during these difficult times. Another area of importance that MSMEs cannot ignore today is process automation, use of analytics, and its resultant optimization for business payments. It is a place where MSMEs should invest today. Regardless of their size, MSMEs need to automate management of their invoices, receipts, get 100% payment reconciliation, and have access to easy, fast, competitively priced short-term financing. American Express has thought through this need and offers buyer-initiated payment solution. This enables consolidation and scheduling of your vendor payments digitally, providing extended payment terms and improve your cash flow cycle. A very powerful, easy to deploy tool that simply plugs into your systems and helps to take advantage of big tech and analytics, something that's used by many large corporations today. So why should you be any different? I think the other important place where a lot of businesses are putting their focus is cost. So managing costs and getting the right and highest ROI on your expense line is become the survival mantra. Deploying intelligent tools for expense management, getting visibility and control in this virtual environment, protecting against unapproved business expenses, all of this is need of the hour. Purchase cards offered by American Express help companies to convert their manual, tiresome business payments, very, very paper intensive today, into digital payments, so zero paper. At the same time, it helps you to generate cash flow benefits, gets you accelerated rewards and offers. So businesses can actually generate savings while they're making business payments online. Lastly, I would say that with the right suite of products and enabling digital platforms, American Express is excited to partner effectively with the MSMEs of India. We look forward to playing a part in digitizing the MSME business models for better efficiency, better agility, and not just help in reviving the sector post the pandemic, but also taking their businesses to new heights. Thank you and look forward to meeting you all. Thank you, Mega. Interesting to hear the initiatives of American Express Banking Corporation. For everyone keen to know more about the products Mega shared, please do visit the stalls in the lobby and and gather all the information that you want. And if you have some questions, please leave, leave them there as well. We will get back to you. And without further ado, let's move on to the next speaker of the day. Now let's move on to the next speaker for the day. We have with us today, the head of the SMB segment, Amazon Internet Services, India, South Asia. He has over two decades of experience and has held several leadership positions previously. He was a managing director at the partner organization at Cisco, where he was responsible for building a successful partner strategy for the company across India and the Sark region. Prior to Cisco, he worked with Wipro Infotech, wherein he started his career and had a successful stint of over five years. 
An ardent believer in power of partnerships and the human network, he has built teams and developed talent, driving innovative thought processes as well as new initiatives where he relentlessly focused on executing the company's strategy and vision. Ladies and gentlemen, let's come together and welcome Mr. B. Raghavendran, the head of SMB segment, Amazon Internet Services, Private Limited, India, South Asia. Good morning. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be here on this platform addressing you all. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and be present in this event. Hope you, your family, your team members and employees are safe and healthy. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk to you about how technology can enable SMBs to accelerate their growth and become the business enterprises of tomorrow. Dun & Bradford, DNB, couldn't have named this event any better. Business enterprises of tomorrow. You, our SMBs, form the backbone of our Indian economy. You are the enterprises and unicorns of the world. You drive one third of employment and GDP and 50% of exports. Estimates indicate that SMBs will contribute to majority of GDP, employment and exports by 2024, thereby making it the single biggest contributor to the Indian government vision of 5 trillion economy by 2025 you will play a key role in making Bharat truly Atmanirbha. And most importantly, SMBs play a leading role in making the Digital India vision a reality. As you all digitize your organizations and adopt technology at various levels. In order to understand how technology can accelerate your business, one need to understand your business. SMB's top of the mind business goals continue to be increasing your bottom line, growing your top line, expanding your reach to new markets for newer customers and revenue streams, increasing your productivity with better tools for your employees and improving your attractiveness as an employer to secure good talent. Studies indicate that technology adoption can play a key role in accelerating these business goals. With up to 2x increase in bottom line profits, 27% increase in top line revenue, almost two thirds increase in access to newer markets and customers, 8.7x increase in employee collaboration, and 84% increase in your attractiveness as an employer. Technology adoption also helps SMBs to innovate and stay relevant to their end customers' fast changing needs who are increasingly demanding digital. Thanks to their exposure to the pace of innovation happening in the startup space. What we have seen is that there are five stages in this journey to digital SMB. And there are several catalysts that are already in the market that helps you move along the journey like smartphone in internet penetration, digitization of payments, and e-commerce being pervasive. Omnichannel, mobile-first solutions like payment wallets, mobile force systems, digital ledgers, and communication platforms are, SM are helping SMBs in the early stages of business life cycle to scale faster. As SMBs graduate, in their business life cycle, they look for solutions to increase their discoverability and scale their businesses through websites, online listings, and social media. The advent of e-commerce revolution enabled retailers and vendors to cross product categories, even in previously disconnected tier two and tier three cities to run successful businesses by using online tools to reach a wider audience and scale across geography, thereby giving them access to new markets, new customers, which led to increase in their top line and bottom line growth. As the SMBs mature further, they look for improving their productivity, efficiency, governance, and compliance. 
a host of SMB first solutions are making it easier for them across accounting, taxation, et cetera, thereby resulting in more efficiency, lower cost, and happy customers leading to business benefits. And we have seen that some of the more progressive SMEs adopting modern and sophisticated technology offerings like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and IoT to drive significant competitive advantage and improve the end customer experience. Also, what I would like to highlight is that this move from SMB to digital SMB is not linear. What we have seen during this pandemic situation is that looking at the market condition, the customer and employee needs, SMBs in India have leapfrogged this journey. They have leapfrogged from being omni-channel mobile first to productivity and infra solutions first SMEs, thereby accelerating their journey to become a digitized SME. Having understood that technology can be a key enabler for accelerating your growth, it also poses a challenge in terms of how we adopt technology as accessibility and affordability is a big challenge for us. And this is where cloud comes into picture in making technology easier, faster, and cheaper to adopt. More importantly, cloud enables you to innovate faster. The future is about organizations who are agile and flexible and who can innovate faster. Because customers' needs will keep changing even more faster than what it was in the past few years. They will work with organizations who are agile and flexible and have the ability to innovate faster. Cloud has democratized technology and is enabling Indian customers across virtually every industry and of every size to adopt technology at a faster pace. As these organizations embrace cloud, they leverage it for increased agility, thus achieving revenue growth by scaling and innovating faster than ever before. They have leveraged cloud to build new business models, launch innovative products and services, and create new sales and customer engagement models. At that note, I would like to thank you all once again for your contribution to the Indian economy and congratulate all the SMBs and mid corporates who are featured in the Dun and Bradstreet's publication. I look forward to your digitization journey as you embrace technology to innovate and drive customer delight. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Mr. Raghavendran, for sharing your commendable insights with us. I'm sure that the audiences have got some valuable insights and key takeaways. And also, dear audiences, as I mentioned earlier, there are a couple of stalls right in the lobby out there. If you want to know more about the services of AWS, just go there and get your information. I would like to now invite our next speaker for the day. He's a CEO of Entity Data Business Solutions. He has over 20 years of experience of driving sales growth in the technology and professional services industry. Private prior to joining Entity Data Business Solutions, he was the Assistant Vice President of Sales and Marketing for iTelligence, where he was responsible for the sales and marketing portfolio within India. Here he championed the company's transformation with double-digit sales year on year. Prior to that, he served as Head of Sales at Fujitsu India, where he was selected as a Fujitsu Leadership Development Program in 2015 for his contribution. He has also worked with top-notch organizations like IBM, CMS, and Philips. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Anil Rao, CEO, Entity Data Business Solutions. Welcome, sir, and over to you. Hello, and good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Sri Nitin Gadkariji, for uh, gracing this occasion and uh, making this uh, conference uh, very special. Uh, 
with uh, your presence here. I'm sure that this platform has attracted a lot of uh, enterprises uh, to be here and to understand um, uh, how the uh, uh, businesses and uh, business enterprises of tomorrow is going to uh, shape up uh, to create uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat. Thanks to DNB for arranging such a lovely conference. I believe uh, you enjoyed listening to uh, the speakers, earlier two speakers on this conference. And uh, I hope I will add a little bit more content uh, to uh, this topic and uh, you will like it. So I hope you all are still comfortable to continue the session and listen to how intelligence uh, will help the business enterprise of tomorrow to be self-reliant, to form and support uh, the Indian government commitment to develop uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat. I personally believe that uh, enterprises of uh, tomorrow are built based on the experiences gathered from the businesses run yesterday and the innovations expected in the future. So what are the lessons that uh, the businesses uh, from yesterday have taught us? One, I think the future business has to be agile. Two, they have to be dynamic, should have a very long-term wave. And the latest being, how do we manage the pandemic situations if they arise in the future? So this is something new, which is good experience from the past. Now, what it takes to be the enterprise of tomorrow. I personally believe this, and I hope you all agree with me, that speed and smart is the name of the game. You need to be able to deliver faster and smarter is what is going to be the need of businesses of tomorrow. The future, for example, the future jobs, the jobs will have new descriptions. So you need to ensure that your business is aligned to those new descriptions. The future will have different employment model and so will be the remuneration, I believe. We already see that in our line of business, which is information technology and communications. We already see there is a different type of employment and there's a different remuneration package coming along. Make sure the product or the service that you are planning to deliver in the future address the disruptive nature of the business. We have seen it. There have been many disruptions that have happened in the last three, four years, including uh, technology adoptions like IoT. Today, the, you can turn on and turn off the air condition before you reach your home. You can remotely start your automotive and bring that car or the bike what you have to alive with a remote key. You have chillers in the cars. So the machines and the other infrastructures, other products are becoming smarter. Therefore, it is imperative for you to understand the disruption and design your business smart. It is not that you want to build something now and later you want to convert it into a smarter business, you're going to waste your time. What you want to do, how you want to prepare your enterprises for tomorrow, it has to be by design. That's what I strongly believe. I'll give another example. A lot of people say, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, but come on, look at what was the first wheel that was invented? It was made of stone. What are the wheels that we're looking at today? They're, we call them smart. For example, a wheel, a tire of a vehicle can tell what is the pressure it is running on. Yeah. 
So those kind of things are going to happen. You need to reinvent the wheel. You need to reinvent your businesses to address the future enterprises, enterprises of tomorrow. These are the typical challenges that we all are going to face. So now, how do you think intelligence can help these businesses to become future ready? Is the question that I'm willing to answer today. What is intelligence known for? That we are technology leaders. We strive to help our customers adopt two technologies which will enable them and their businesses to serve their customers better. What is the meaning of that? Earlier I said, speed and smart is name of the game. To get there, intelligence will come really handy as a technology partner. We understand all sorts of technologies, right from the ERPs, PLMs, Internet of Things, and uh, what we call them robotic process automations, the cloud technologies, you name it and we have it. So now, obviously, you can adopt these technologies to have, if you have the money, but that is not it. Intelligence will work with the enterprises of tomorrow, like, such as you, to create a roadmap in a way you understand and align your business requirements, your business priorities to the technologies and the technology services that can come in next three to five years and you have a very clear roadmap. This is where I think we are going to add bigger value to you. And how you, want, you may want to know that intelligence will play such a strong role to help the enterprises of today to shape up for enterprises of tomorrow to take control on the situation to become self-reliant. Any one company, we believe strongly that any one company cannot have it all. So therefore, we have an advantage, we have created an advantage for ourselves by having a partnership with leading technology providers in India and also globally. These are all global players such as SAP, Siemens, Microsoft, AWS, Google, and all these key players who have been in the market for centuries, working very closely with customers who were the enterprises of the past who have now become the large conglomerates and become you know, multi-billion dollar enterprises. So these companies, these partners of us and intelligence working together with the enterprises to create a long-term vision, a long-term roadmap to address the present requirements as well as the future roadmap. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe that enterprises of tomorrow has to be built by design, not by accident. And to be, to be able to build the future enterprises by design, you need to understand uh, the geopolitical changes that will happen. You need to understand the technological innovations that will happen. You need to benchmark your businesses with your, uh, with your peers in the market to be able to draw a conclusion on what exactly is required for all of us to put together a blueprint to transform your businesses today into enterprises of tomorrow. I would like to uh, have any number of discussions, any number of exchanges with you on this topic in the future. And I look forward to work very closely with you to develop Atmanirbhar Bharat. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our chief guest, Sri Nitin Gadkariji, Union Minister for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises and Road Transport and Highways.
from Government of India. I would also like to thank Mr. Julian Prover, Mr. Avinash Gupta, Ms. Megha Chopra, and Mr. Raghavindran. Thank you very much for joining us and making this conference uh, very uh, important and very attractive. Namaste. Thank you, Mr. Anil Rao. It was indeed very interesting to hear you speak out loud about your company's initiatives. I'm very sure that people who have visited the stall of Entity and intelligence must have got a lot of information as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Rao. And now we will move on to the next segment. Of course, the panel discussion, which most of you have been awaiting because all of you must be wanting to know a lot more on how we can help these business enterprises of tomorrow. Needless to say, the theme is, of course, business enterprises of tomorrow, scripting the rise of Atmanirbhar Bharat. With us today, we have Dr. Arun Singh, who is a global chief economist done in Bradstreet as a panel moderator and anchor. He's individual who will drive this discussion and get us some good, fantastic key takeaways on how we can help create a good Atmanirbhar Bharat. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen, and we look forward to a very interesting session with you. Just a gentle reminder to all our viewers, your thoughts matter to us, and we would truly appreciate if you could share your thoughts and talk about your concerns, your challenges, as well as some good key takeaways you have got from this event on your respective social media and digital media. Don't forget to use the hashtags DNBSME2020 and hashtag DNBMC2020. And with this, I would like to hand over to Dr. Arun Singh. Dr. Arun, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the panel discussion. I welcome our esteemed panelists today, Sri Sudhir Gurgji. Joint Secretary, Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprise, Government of India. Dr. Rajat Kathuria, Director and Chief Executive, Indian Council for Research on International Economic Rel Relation. Mr. Sanjay Singh, Vice President, CD Asia. Welcome all to the today's panel discussion. I am. My name is Arun Singh, and I am an economist with Dun and Bradstreet. Today we are going to discuss very exciting and very interesting subject and which is very apt and suitable to the current environment. Welcome all to today's panel, uh, panel discussion. In fact, I'm looking forward to a much uh, insightful and knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable panel discussion. There is an opportunity in every crisis. This statement often been used at multiple times and there are many other related uh, statements we have seen and uh, that's what basically defined today what's happening. The ongoing pandemic has revealed the fault lines in the current model of global supply chain and has helped us realize the importance of self-reliance. Indian businesses have shown tremendous resilience to the nimble and adopt quickly to a fast changing market and the challenges and opportunities it has thrown up in the last couple of months. Production of bottle dispensers has now increased to 30 lakhs pieces a day from just five lakhs before COVID-19. From zero manufacturer in March, 2020 to more than thousand indigenous manufacturers of PPE kits have been developed by the government till date. Most of them being from MSME sector. MSMEs have also helped India in achieving self-sufficiency in hand sanitizing materials and have contributed immensely in the producing auxiliary items like mask, face shields, sanitizer box, testing facilities, and you know other item related. However, for India to position itself as a major manufacturing hub, it is critical that India's business environment shifts. The SME sector is riddled with the numerous challenges, which we all are aware of. In fact, we are engaged with the MSME last 15 years and reaching out to them, uh, asking them what are the challenges they face. Unfortunately, some of the challenges are consistently repeated every year. And, and, and in fact, that's our underserved in many ways. Uh, and what's happening is one of the major uh, concern is like, you know, today nearly 70% of the addressable SME debt demand in India remains unmet. 
the percentage of e-commerce sales to total retail sales stands at 2% in India compared to around 14% globally. For every 100 entities, 95 belongs to the micro category and only 4 belongs to the small and medium category and just less than 1 to the large category. What we call this is a missing middle. To achieve our vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat, India needs to nurture the SME segment and help them confront the problems of low productivity and the missing middle in the optics of India distribution. Let's deliberate more on this subject. I will start with my first question to Mr. Gurg, uh, Gurgji. Uh, my first question to you, uh, there is very high preponderance of firms uh, that are in the micro and small segment. What measures do we need to help the SME sector to grow that is from small sector to the medium firms and finally from medium firms to the large firms because we want to sail through this crisis as soon as possible. What are the measures you feel uh, we can do? Uh, good evening to everybody. And it's a pleasure to be part of this group, a group which is highly dynamic and is a pillar of the modern India. Well, we, uh, we in the ministry are very well aware that it is the SME sector, the micro and small sector, which can really has, which can really do a transformation of the economy. Word over it has shown that because of the dynamism in the small, medium, small and micro sectors, things have changed much faster. If you take the example of the Western world, there was a group of people there who were dynamic, who are innovators, who are doing things in a different manner. And that's how they turned around and made their country global leaders in many of the areas. And that is the concept we had to adopt in our country as well. If you see the change that is happening, there was a time when best of the students from IITs and other colleges used to go to Western world, America, Europe. Then there was a change and they started becoming part of the bureaucracy. Now, a big change that is happening is that they are all starting going for startups. So the best of the intellects are now coming up to the startups and that is the force, that is the change which is happening. And I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I believe that this will really roll into big, big companies. Now the ministry really understand that there's a lot of handholding required to the SME sector. And for that, we have multi-pronged policies frameworks. And first of, the, first of the things that we think is that when we think of SME, then we think of a person with less resources. So for that, we are trying to create a technological infrastructure where all the people can go, give shape to their ideas, play with their ideas, and then can they can also use these facilities into plug and play mode without setting up any any manufacturing facilities, they can use these facilities to start their businesses. So these are called technology centers, which we are setting up across the country. This country already have 18 technology centers. We are now building 15 more at a cost of around 3000 crore. Out of that 13 have already started functioning. And government has given further sanction to build, to start 120 more such centers across the country at a cost of around 6000 crore taking these technology centers up to the district level. So this is one, one peer. Second, we believe is that unless people join hands, they will not be able to grow. So we have schemes like MSE sleep and Sfurti, where uh, small scale or micro enterprises, they can join hands and they can uh, seek assistance from the government up to rupees 20 crores in a single facility where a high-end technology facility can be supported by government of India and they can really join hand and they can use this common facility to, uh, to create new solutions for themselves and become really competitive. And the third approach we have is that to build their other capabilities like process changes, like 
technology like so one process change when we say that lean manufacturing is one common thing available across the world which really builds your builds your uh, competitiveness easily by 30 percent your output grows by 30 percent then design capability so we have a scheme called uh, design clinic where 80 percent support is provided under the lean scheme also we provide 80 percent funding so these kind of schemes are available through which the msme sector can take help and then grow bigger and and i can tell you that people are really taking help of it and i share a small story uh, i was in pune and i was talking to a group of industries and i said how have, how are you using the benefit from the msme uh, ministry and one gentleman said that he has used the lean scheme before he used the lean scheme his mobile used to keep on ringing now after adoption of the lean he is able to devote time for various other activities like marketing finance and things like that. so this is one thing that we're talking about the technology side then similarly on the marketing side so we are providing various platforms for selling their products and uh, like kvic is providing a lot of support and in the ministry we are thinking something more on the on those fronts in addition we provide assistance for domestic and international showcasing their products they can participate and funding up to 50 percent is given to these uh, enterprises and third is most important the finance so we have uh, various schemes like cgt msc is one important scheme where uh, they were there they were they are supported by by the government of india uh, to you know where the where they, they take a lot of loans for those loans we provide support under this scheme and yes uh, 30 lakh uh, crores uh, scheme which has uh, which has been announced by the sorry uh, this is 3 lakh crore which has been announced by honorable pm in which msmes can take loan and and already 1.5 lakh crore has been disbursed and that is scheme so these are the various steps that we are taking so that msmes can take help of these schemes and can grow bigger better and faster thank you mr gurg uh, that was really good insightful from the policy maker side and uh, i mean i'll come back to the technology center question because there's some uh, question coming up on that so i will ask you later but now uh, i think uh, there's a reference to the you know historical uh, stuff so i thought uh, let me go to dr kathuria with the same uh, concept of uh, dr kathuria you know my my next question is to you that atmanirbhar bharat is you know mm. it's a basically touted as essential for india's globe com- uh, you know global competitiveness and that's rightly uh, said that at least there are initiatives taken to consistently uh, you know uh, to ensure that we are basically globally competitive in fact this ideology was you know was there to some extent post independence until 1980s the outcome was the opposite of the intended industrial upgradation was prolonged and india did not gain competitive advantage so in your opinion what factors are different this time that will make this policy a great success and uh, we i mean indian sme uh, sector achieve a global competitiveness thank you arun uh, for inviting me to this show thank you dan and that street and it's a privilege to be on the same panel as mr sudhir garg and mr sanjay singh and i think arun you've asked a very very important question and i think what mr uh, sudhir garg said and what you said in the introduction that the micro small and medium enterprises are really the backbone of any economy both in terms of technology both and in terms of exports as well as in terms of creating employment every country before us whether it was china uh, whether it was korea or japan have bloomed on the back of uh, small and medium enterprises that have begun to export and therefore have been able to create employment have been able to become globally competitive and therefore have helped in the take off of these countries to double digit growth and i think if india is to aspire to double digit growth or even you know close to double digit growth that we were aspiring to before the pandemic uh if india is to aspire to those high rates of growth i think uh there will have to be a completely uh, sort of vibrant uh, small and medium enterprise sector there is no gain saying the fact that small and medium enterprises 
will be the instrument of growth and the instrument of takeoff. And I say that for two reasons, especially, and both are related to the question that you've asked, Arun. One is that India has to create productive jobs in the future. I think every policy that India needs to look at has to be looked at from the lens of job creation, given our demographics. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I think job creation is absolutely essential for our economy and small and medium enterprises can be the vehicle through which jobs are created. And secondly, in order to become globally competitive, again, small and medium enterprises will be the answer to our global competitiveness. So if you have to look at both job creation and competitiveness, and then look at Atmanirbhar Bharat and try and compare this Atmanirbhar Bharat with what we did in the 70s and 80s. And I think it is different today. If we actually go back to what we did in the 70s and 80s, then I think we will de degenerate into protectionism. A lot of people have been saying that uh, this looks like protectionism, but I don't think it is the same kind of protectionism that we had in the 70s and 80s. Those of us who have lived in India in the 70s and 80s recognized very quickly that protectionism was actually insidious in the economy because it allowed manufacturers as you yourself said, that manufacturers became very con uh, concentrated and it gave us the result exactly the opposite of what we wanted. And the reason was because it was a protected market. You could actually sell anything at high prices to a captive audience. And you certainly don't want that to happen today. And I don't think we fear that is happening, that is going to happen today. India is a very different economy uh, from 70s and 80s, we have a lot of foreign direct investment, we have a lot of competition within the domestic market. Look at automobiles, look at the telecom sector, look at the electronic sector, look at the peripheral sector. There, there is a lot of competition. It is very, very different from what happened uh, in the 70s and 80s. So I think we need to dispel the fact that uh, this Atmanirbhar Bharat is definitely not the same as what was in the 70s and 80s. But we also need to be cautious of the fact that this Atmanirbhar Bharat, which we are looking at the lens of job creation and global competitiveness, doesn't become too protectionist. And the reason why a number of people are thinking that this could become protectionist is because tariffs in the last few budgets, tariffs, especially on certain products, and uh, you, know, you can look at furniture, you can look at electronics, tariffs have been rising. And I would suggest that even if we increase tariffs and components and try and reverse what we have called the inverted duty structure, we should resist the temptation of trying to use tariffs and as an instrument to improve competitiveness. I think our purpose will be better served by creating an enabling domestic environment rather than resorting to increasing tariffs to improve competitiveness. Because remember, if you increase tariff, it is like an export tax. So if you are, there is a theorem in, in, in economics and trade, which is called the learner theorem. If you increase import duties, you are actually taxing exports. So it's not a good way to become globally competitive. It's not a good way to begin to use India as an export base. And you know, what will happen in India is that as production becomes more competitive, value addition automatically will go up just like it happened in China. So we should not impose any conditions in the beginning of value addition. Value volumes can be the first stage. And then over time, just like it has happened in other countries, value addition of small and medium enterprises, et cetera, will grow up. And we can become, therefore, global. So I would say that create a better enabling environment, just like Mr. Sudhir Garg has identified all those things that have been identified. We need to create a better enabling environment from our, for our, our, our medium, small, and micro enterprises. And two, very crucial that resist the temptation of trying to use tariffs as an instrument to promote Make in India, because then it will achieve exactly the opposite result. Because, you know, once you put a tariff in place, it becomes really difficult, as we have seen, as you yourself have said, Arun, it becomes very difficult to undo that. And of course, it also sort of affects our, our, our compliance with the WTO. But notwithstanding that, it really affects the competitiveness of our domestic industry. 
No, thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Katuria. And in fact, I tell you that I personally was working on to find out the low productivity in India in those days and how even the Eastern European countries or other Asian tigers are basically, uh, you know, crossed us. And there was many reasons we basically got and what, you know, rightly pointed out. And I think, uh, uh, I think, I think uh, this time we have a good learning and it's just basically how we can execute so as we can get the intended uh, outcome. Now, uh, on, on a, from an execution perspective, you know, I'm coming to you, uh, Mr. Singh, uh, uh, that now you are basically uh, at a recipient and I can say that, you know, running a, a company, running a factory. And uh, from that perspective, uh, uh, you know, my first question is that a self-reliant India or the Atma, Atmanirbhar Bharat stands on the five major foundation of economy, infrastructure, technology, demography, and demand, basically. How can MSME sector, I mean, from a recipient and from a part of that sector, I mean, how MSME sector achieve the vision of growth-driven India by banking on these pillars? Thank you. Thank you, Ankar. And good evening, Mr. Gar, Kathuria Saab, and all fellow panelists. It's great to be here in the discussing on such an important subject um, in which we are a traveler. We are, we are representing a small scale sector. So referring to a study, Financial Express News, that all these almost 4,000 of listed companies, they have done a splendidly nice in the last quarter. They have booked a very good profit, all these listed companies, and, and by cutting down, down their costs, etc. So that in turn indicates, so once this cost cutting is done by the largest sectors, so that, that gives the impact to the MSME sectors. And we are into that, and we are feeling, and we are observing that due to that cost cutting of the large sectors, MSME in reality, is in a very squeezed position. They have lesser orders, they have more competition, they have extra expenses, they have done in last eight, nine months of pandemic closure. So MS, MSCB sector is very important. There is nothing new, everyone accepts. It is known worldwide. We also accept this is the largest generator of employment and they come to the occasion Recently, we have seen that all these masks and sanitizers and all, and maybe coming time in distribution of this um, medicine, etc. Everything will be, MSME will be involved this way or that way. So MSME sector, they always come to the occasion, rise to the occasion, and they deliver the things in a very quicker and faster way. So now accepting that, that the sector is in, crisis, I can say. So already as explained by Mr. Garg and whatever the news are coming through, uh, government has already taken certain initiatives. And in view of this uh, five pillars of the economy, infrastructure, technology, and demographic, and demand pillars, MSME sector, to our knowledge and to best of our experience, I can only say, that uh, environment and sustainability should be the common factor for all these four, four or five pillars. The time has gone that you take, make, and waste. This is true for large sectors as well as the small sectors as well, but it is more important for the smaller sector, which has got a very limited resources, limited, limited uh, um, money supply, limited orders, limited profitability. So sustainability and recycling, taking care of the environment is very, very important for all the MSME to move on this Atme Nirbhar Bharat so that they can sustain their growth path in a longer term. Now, as the MSME sector, they have got so many shortcomings so many leverages they have to take. They, they do not have all the facilities which these big empires are enjoying. 
they do not have contacts, they do, do not have any audience, but still the only way is left to them is to do the business in a renewed atmosphere and they have to take the initiative so that they can sustain in the, all, all the, in the coming times. There is no shortage of talent and intent within, and within the MSME sector. Only thing is required is uh, they, have, they, they have to be considered by the, all the authorities like government of India or the state government to give them support in all the fields they require. And they should have an ambience and audience to uh, get their grievance out. That is what I can add to this. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Singh, uh, for that uh, insightful uh, comment. And in fact, that's coming directly from the sector uh, participant, and that's basically make make lot of point that you are basically using and you are in the selling through that issues and concern and that opportunity basically uh, are presented by COVID-19. And in fact, coming to the opportunity presented by COVID-19, one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you must have seen a short break on the screen, right? And that's because today with us, we have a very, very influential speaker and a very, very influential visionary as well. So uh, we always look forward to interesting conversations with thought leaders and visionaries. And amongst us today, we have a very influential leader and visionary who through his sheer dedication and commitment has helped our nation achieve great milestones. While he needs no introduction, he certainly deserves a special mention for his achievements and progressive work dedicated to our nation. Owing to his fantastic execution st strategy, he has earned the distinction of being a visionary. During his entire political career, he has launched several welfare projects, including Mission Antodaya, to improve the life of the underprivileged through eradication of poverty, provision of basic necessities to every family. During his tenure as PWD Minister of Maharashtra, his tireless efforts improved the road connectivity in the state, which resulted in 98% of the total population of Maharashtra getting all weather road connectivity in a record four years time. In his quest for innovative solutions, he adopted the public-private partnership model that was instrumental in the successful completion of various massive projects, which includes Mumbai Pune Expressway, 55 flyovers in Mumbai, and the Golden Quadrilateral. It's only apt when we say that this feat won him the nickname, nickname Flyover Man. Truly commendable, sir. In 2014, he was sworn in as the Minister of Road Transport. During his tenure, the first inland waterway was developed. Over the last five years, he has relentlessly pursued his mission of rapid development, creating job opportunities for millions of youth and making a substantial contribution to the country's growing GDP. And recently, one of the most challenging assignments he's been entrusted with is that of generating 5 million employment opportunities, focusing on the youth and women in the MSME sector. As a union ministry, minister of this particular sector, his focus is to enable an ecosystem for manufacturing and services by the MSMEs. His, the core strategy, the core of his strategy is creating common facility centers, developing clusters of traditional industries in the use of technology, including green technology, digital financing, and credit insurance, amongst a host of the others. As one of the senior most members of the Narendra Modi government, he is seen as a man of the masses and an accomplished social reformer and is consistently engaged in accomplishing PM Narendra Modi's dream of building a new India. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's roll out the red carpet for our chief guest, Honorable Union Minister of Road Transport and Highways and of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Sri Nitin Gadkariji. Let's welcome him with a grand round of applause. I request Sri Nitin Gadkariji to please take the center stage. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Namaskar. All my dear friends, it is really a positive for me to interact with you. The MSME sector is very important and it is the uh, one of the backbone of Indian economy. Presently, in the GDP growth, the 30% contribution from MSME, the total export of our country out of which 48% is from MSME. And at the same time, up till now, we have created 11 crore jobs. So this is one of the important sector for the country 
and now the prime minister has given us a mission mission of atmanirbhar bharat as a safe reliant bharat and for that reason the role of msme is very important the msme is very competitive and globally they have taken lot of new technology have accepted in the new technology they have contribute in the indian exports actually the initiative taken by government to enhance export for that reason the role of msme is equally important i am uh, already uh, you know that the whole world is facing the problem of covid 19 everywhere there is a negativity and frustration and this is the time for the country and the people for everybody in the interest that we need to create positivity and self confidence in the mind of the people and that is very important so we need to understand art of living with covid 19 and because of covid also we are facing the economic problem the government has already sanctioned the 3 lakh crores collateral free automatic loans to banks nbfcs and individual loans for business purposes on principal interest and interest the tenure of the loan is 5 years and is available till 31st march 2021 this is the first decision taken by the government and i am really happy that 100 lakh 48000 crores has already been disbursement is already is completed we have also taken decision to make 20000 crore subordinate debt for msmes in that scheme also we can support the msme we have also now the msme those who have track record having good bank turnover having good income tax turnover uh, record and gst record where we are giving them 50000 crore as equity infusion in the msme where they can go to capital market and raise the funds the new definition of msme is also changed that is a revolutionary change in the history of msme and this is going to benefit it to the people by and large ministry of msme has launched new portal as udyam registration portal on 172020 a new champion portal launch on 1st june 2020 by the honorable pm the global tender to be dissolved up to rupees 2 200 crores e market linkage for msmes to be promoted to act as a replacement for trade fairs and exhibitions and uh, fintech will uh, be used to enhance transaction based lending using the data generated by the e market places msme receivables for government and cpscs to be released in 45 days still this is a problem but we are our trying level best to resolve this issue the it initiative taken by the ministry to promote the development of msmes that is msme samadhan msme sambandh and udyam registration portal by this way we are trying to help the msme and 100% we are getting good results from it the major schemes of msme is prime minister employment generation program they are very very good responses there and now the number is also increase and people are taking the advantage of this scheme the credit guarantee fund scheme for micro and small enterprises cgtmc that is also giving good response the credit link capital subsidy scheme for technology upgradation that is also doing well the schemes for khadi and village industry sector is very important presently our village industry stand or khadi gramodhog and do handicrafts is 80000 crore our highest priority for development for agriculture rural tribal and 115 aspirant districts where present turnover is the village industry turnover is 80000 crore and our plan is to make it 5 lakh crore in 2 years already the amazon has making the export of 70000 crore from msme and village industry the scheme of fund for regeneration of traditional industries spurti that is also doing well we have already sanctioned some 93 schemes and all the pipeline there are more than 100 schemes are there and we want to clear it as early as possible the cluster development program is also we have lot of schemes have been sanctioned technology center scheme program is very important now we are thinking to make a joint venture with a successful vendors successful entrepreneurs those who are already doing excellent jobs we will try to take the advantage of the knowledge of iit engineering college and industry and industry association by making the joint venture we want to make it more 
of international standard and having innovation and making a technology upgradation in the country. Setting up incub incubation center is also good. There are a lot of IIT and engineering colleges are helping us for that. The emerging area in which MSME can work sustainability, green manufacturing, waste to wealth, remanufacturing, development of smart villages, e-mobility, artificial intelligence, robotics, virtual reality based solution, etc. The Ministry of MSME is working to set up a number of center of excellences with IITs, NIITs, etc. We recently opened a center in IIT Madras to develop new technology and products for the choir sector, choir sector for value addition of various products. I am really happy for the reason that the, the way in which the all MSMEs are doing excellent jobs. Though we are facing crisis, economic crisis, I am confident that we will get vaccine as early as possible and 100% we will win this war against COVID-19 and also we will win economic war. I am giving my special thanks to Dunn and Bradstreet for a leading global provider of business decisionating data and analytics enables companies around the world to improve their business performance. I will request them that we have now decided taking more investment in India in MSME. We are now in the defense sector also by 100% FDI route is open or infrastructure is open and for MSME for taking good technology or accepting good technology and at the same time we need to reduce the cost and increase the number of production. That is the reason we need collaborations and investment from abroad. I am confident that you will be helpful for all this, our mission regarding investment and upgradation in the technology. That is the reason that I am very much appreciating your role. I am giving my special thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I mean, just li sheer listening to you made us feel that, you know, we are in very safe hands, sir. We couldn't be more uh, thankful for all your commitment. Sir, as we said that, you know, there are there are over uh, 1,000, 2,000 people here listening to you and uh, considering that, you know, you have limited time. Uh, there are just two, there are a couple of questions of which I'll just ask about uh, two questions, sir, with your permission. Yes. Well, yeah. So, sir, uh, the, the the government is saying that, you know, the MSME's contribution to the GDP is over 50%. Uh, how do you foresee the role of MSMEs in making the vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat a huge uh, success? Actually, the frankly speaking, the simple definition of Atmanirbhar Bharat is we need to reduce imports and increase export. For that reason, we need upgradation in technology reducing the cost, improving the packaging and the present the item to the world in a nice way. And that is important thing which now MSME needs. And where Atmanirbhar Bharat, self-reliant India, this is the mission of our Prime Minister. We are make, already decided to make the infrastructure of 100 lakh crores. We are now working on alternative fuels, ethanol, methanol, biodiesel, bio CNG, electric and hydrogen fuel cell. I am 100% confident due course of time we will reduce our export imports in crude oil. We are in the electronic software also. We are doing a lot of projects starting from mobile phone to laptop to everything. Where we need to make in India and made in India is our priority. Our startup, standup, innovation, researcher, they are doing excellent jobs. The innovation, entrepreneurship, science, technology, research, skill and successful practices. We name it as a knowledge and conversion of knowledge into wealth is the future. Conversion of waste into wealth and conversion of knowledge into wealth. That is two important thing for making of Atma Nirbhar Bharat. And I'm confident to India free from hunger. There will be a social econo and economic equality, job opportunities, increase in per capita income and GDP. At the same time, increase in export and 100% we want to reduce imports. That is exactly a, a strong global economic picture. That is the mission of the Prime Minister to make India Atma Nirbhar Bharat. And we are working hard on this. And I am confident that we 100% we will fulfill the dream of our Honorable Prime Minister. 
Absolutely, sir. I mean, this is giving reassurance to all of us out here uh, where, uh, you know, we, we, we know that the, the country is definitely going on a growth tra trajectory. There is just before we go, so just another question that's come, which again is in line with what you said, sir, that in the current environment, the MSMEs today need some assurance because they fear a lot of import tariffs, specifically for the ones who are heavily dependent on imports in general uh, and basically from China. So they would look forward to some words of wisdom and assurance from you, sir. Do you have some message for them? Already in automobile sector, even in many sectors now, in Agarbati, automobile, everywhere, we have already find out the solutions. Now we don't need to import from China. And even in place of that, particularly related with a lot of items, in place of imports, we are making the exports. So I don't want to talk anything much about China and other things, because every country has their own policies. But as far as Indian policies are concerned, the way in which we are accepting the technology, reducing the cost and making the good quality, our strength is the young, talented manpower, which is available in India, that is really a great strength for the country. At the same time, our IIT, engineering colleges, research centers, they are doing a lot of innovation. And by which I am 100% confident that we, we will fulfill the requirement of the whole world. And the people in the world are now the Western countries, other countries, they are keenly interested to deal with India. Now in the whole world, majority of the country, they are not interested to deal with China. In a situation, it is advantageous for Indian economy and Indian manufacturing sector, taking the advantage of the situation and to create more export for the country. I am confident that things are moving fast. We are on the track. We have already reduced our imports from China and already our export is increasing. The trends are very, very positive and I am expecting good results in this field. Thank you very much, Gadkari uh, Ji, because the kind of assurance that you have given us gives instills confidence over and over again. And we are very, very thankful to see leaders, forward-looking leaders such as yourself governing the country. Thank you so very much. Um, now, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, the moment has finally arrived uh, for us to launch the premier publication of Dunham Pratt Street. And I request Sri Nitin Gadkari Ji to please do the honors, sir. Well, time. It's finally here, ladies and gentlemen. We bring to you the compendiums Leading SMEs of India 2020 and Leading Mid Corporates of India 2020 that, that will outline a futuristic, actionable report for the SMEs and mid corporates. Let me also add here that the publications combine the lists of 10,000 businesses and profiles, 1,000 leading performers among India's SMEs and mid corporates on the basis of consistency of financial performance for the past three financial years. These publications will be made available through digital platforms to the CXOs of leading corporates, MSMEs, and mid corporates, the BFSI sector, and the government and ministries. It can also be downloaded from the Dun & Bradstreet India website, www.dnb.co.in. It's pretty easy to access, so hope you find, hope you will do the needful and download your copy right now. And 
Before we move ahead, on behalf of Dan and Bradstreet and all our partners, I would like to really thank you, Sri Nitin Gadkari ji, again for taking time out from a very very busy schedule and gracing this occasion. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you for your kind words for Dan and Bradstreet as well as his partners. Thank you very much, sir. Have a very very good day. Basically, uh, for Indian companies and for any other. global companies basically a supply chain realignment of the global you know supply chain and that's what basically happening at the sort of time that's my um, you know, that's my next question to uh, gurg sir that uh, you know in fact the, this covid-19 pandemic uh, has a trigger uh, what we call a trend of near shoring and reorientation of the global supply chain and there's a lot of discussion happening around it and in fact right from a April or May, there's a lot of initiatives taken by government on in that front, and there are a lot of uh, discussion happening around this. India certainly is viewed as a bright spot for business relocation. What initiative have been planned for SME sector to make the most use of this? Uh, uh, what we call a global realignment, because company basically they want uh, to shift the base uh, without impacting their current. Uh, uh, global supply chain uh, framework yeah i think uh, it's a very great opportunity and uh, as we say that every disruption is a is a door for growth is a growth engine by itself covid 19 has really made us think differently and one of the things which we now find is that government of india and honorable pm has been uh, directing and has been requesting for everybody to adopt digitization in a faster manner and what we found in last 6 months the growth of digitization has been what has happened in last 5 to 6 years so i just want to share one small story here rather two stories one recently i was talking to a friend of mine who is a chartered accountant and i asked him how the business is doing so he said yes businesses are coming back to their uh, normal position but there is a change which he is seeing and the change is that some businesses are growing faster and some are finding it difficult to continue and then further he explained that all those businesses who have adopted digitization are growing very fast they are not able to meet the demand of the people and that takes took me back to 1990 when i was posted in varanasi and i was talking to one shopkeeper in gadolia gadolia is a famous market where yeah. all the shops are there right, right. so i asked him that what is his son doing and he said it's a very interesting story my son was not doing much we were worried what will he do and then one day he said i want to buy a computer and uh, mind you in those days computer used to cost around 60000 rupees my salary was 3000 rupees in those days so he bought a computer and after 6 months they realized that their sale has grown up so uh, they started looking what has happened and they found that now with this computer they know which person sari sells best where to place orders now which customer is paying us good so all those kind of things started happening now this is a good thing which has happened but the real thing which really happened was that when after another 6 months everybody started noticing increased sale of this shop then all other people said ki what has happened to this shop and they realized that he has put up a computer there and that's why he is having increased sale and he is now tells me that everybody in 6 months had a computer in his shop so that is the power of change and i am pretty sure that my msme friends have that capability to change fast once they realize the benefit they can change very very fast now my msmes are realizing the benefits of change how digitization is really built is going to build their capabilities competitiveness that is what is we are now trying to push from the government of india the industrial fourth the fourth industrial revolution is already there we are moving ahead with that we are not lagging the way 
we did in the first three industrial revolutions. So we are in the right place, right time. And our industry are ready to adopt these kind of changes. And we are trying to create an ecosystem in which we can provide uh, facilitation at every step of manufacturing, from designing of the product, like simulation technologies, 3D, 3DP, uh, 3D printers, things like that. And then for marketing, then IoT based technology so that they can have a, a right type of quality manufactured products. Also, all their supply chain is also integrated very well so that they can really uh, have a very clear visibility what is happening on the shop floor, how they are connected very well, how they're taking best uh, benefit out of the manpower, machines, and things like that. So this is one ecosystem we are trying to create, and we are sure that this ecosystem will really build the competitiveness of the industry. And once that happens, once we are more competitive, we are looking more smarter, then the global industry is going to come here. And another thing which we see as a change of this process is that the ancillary culture, which was pushing things from the top side, has to change to innovation-oriented culture. And we believe that with the adoption of new technologies, industry will be able to move in the new era of innovation-based incubation-oriented approach, and they will be able to create new products, new designs, which will be globally accepted and people will be able to use our intellect in a different manner. I believe you already are aware that India has 1,250 global R&D center. So we are the intellect capital of the world. So with that, we have to really use those intellectuals, those intellect power, which is available with every Indian. We have to encash upon that and then grow faster. That's what is, is the real uh, theme on which we are trying to work. And the ministry has uh, set up a uh, small task force uh, for Industrial 4.0. We are working on that. And we will be coming out with some policies so that we can provide more support to the industry for this Industry 4.0 technologies. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Gar. And that was really good because I'll come back to Industry 4 because there's a related question uh, was asked to you. Uh, now that's a related question to uh, you, Dr. Katuria. Is basically, uh, I'm, I know I'm conscious about timing, but uh, I'm trying to rush. So, the, uh, that question basically to achieve the stated goal of uh, make for the world and further integrate India into the global value chain. What basically you know we are basically discussing. What are the policy priorities that the government needs to remain focused on? So, uh, thanks, Akul. So I think the, the policy choices, uh, let me make sort of two sets of comments. One is uh, what are the policy choices? And two is what are the sort of execution of those policies? Often what happens, and Mr. Sudhir Garg would be able to, to tell us, is that the government announces policies um, for small and medium enterprises, for micro enterprises. And often what happens, those, those policies, the execution of those policies, uh, you know, falls short of what is necessary. So I think one, a renewed focus on good execution, and I think government has made a, a commitment to good execution, and I think that should continue. That good execution should continue in terms of the policies reaching the end user, policies reaching the end beneficiary. And just to digress for a moment, like, uh, you know, direct benefit transfer that we said, uh, that we kind of eliminate the transactions costs, eliminate a lot of leakages that happen uh, in, the, in, the, in the middle uh, has been a good policy. And some of the benefits of that good execution are being beginning to, we are beginning to see them. And I think we should use, as Mr. Sudhir Garg is saying, we should try and use technology as much as possible to enable good execution of our policy. So I would sort of put a lot of emphasis on implementation as well, because the Achilles heel of India has often been implementation uh, and not uh, policy design. But on policy design as well, so what is it that would enable small and medium enterprises? And I think going back to the points that uh, have already been made, uh, one is that why do small and medium enterprises or micro enterprises in India 
don't grow? Why is the firm dynamic in India such that there is an incentive to remain small? So we should look at that in the world over, you know, when Google started or when Apple started, or when these, as, as Mr. Garg said, startups uh, are happening, but they have to also grow and become big because innovation is the hallmark of small companies, as you yourself said. These are the nimble companies. The big companies often are not very nimble. So we have to encourage these small startups. We have to encourage the ecosystem of startups, but also enable them to become big. Often what has happened in India, that small has remained beautiful uh, for various policy constraints. And we should try and remove those policy constraints that small can become big and then new small companies, new startups will come and tend to occupy that space. In China, apparently, it takes five years from the start for a firm to become really big. And in India, it would take 25 years to cover the same journey. So what I'm saying is there are incentives in India to remain small, and we should look at those uh, incentives. Some of those incentives, incentives have been taken away uh, because you know we had protection for small uh, and micro enterprise, some of those have been taken away. Give them positive incentives rather than negative incentives. And those positive incentives is what Mr. Garg has been talking about. Give them support, give them technology support, give them financial credit support, but don't create negative incentives, uh, which will you know disable them from becoming big. And once they become big, then they can create employment, then they can create productive employment as well. So I would emphasize that, uh, you know, create an ecosystem where enterprises uh, uh, grow and try and reduce this transaction cost. And we are all, as I said, we are familiar with all this power, uh, connectivity, logistics, transaction cost, taxation problems, environment problems, labor inspector problems. I mean, the whole host of those issues that we are all familiar with in India. I think those need to be addressed. And I would say if you were to become globally competitive uh, and look at competition and export for small and medium enterprises, there is no harm in trying to look at strategies uh, of exchange rate. I mean, we haven't really used exchange rate, and I know it's a provocative and it's a controversial thing in India. You, if you want to become globally competitive, China used exchange rates really well in order to become competitive. And I know that you know exchange rates have other impact. It's not in a general equilibrium. If you if you use exchange rate for exports, then of course it's going to you know, affect your imports as well. But we've never seriously considered or discussed using exchange rate as a mechanism for promoting exports. So I would say, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> focus on good implementation, but also try and address those policies which have incentivized enterprises to remain small, uh, get rid of those, uh, and then also look at neutral policies like exchange rate across the board. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Katoria, and uh, your uh, statement uh, is right. And you know, in other countries probably take just five years from a company to company. I mean, in India, it's a hard to even think about 25 years. I mean, sometimes it show other way around because I was looking at the top top 500 company in India for the last 15 years. When I take a different uh, cohort of that, 50% 50, 50 of the company got replaced. So that's good that uh, the new company coming in, but there's a bad that there is no sustainable growth path. And other side, when I look at some of the data that 40% of the company actually go out of business. Uh, for every 10 to 15 years, which means I don't know whether the company was exist or not, or whether they did not uh, pursue in that way. So I, 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 I can agree. I mean, in fact, I could agree with you what assessment about the, how from a small to medium to large is basically so uh, tricky in India and, and sometimes create a problem. And uh, yeah, I know I'm conscious about time. So my last question to you, uh, Mr. Singh, that now since in the part of uh, MSME segment and the uh, beneficiary and uh, recipient intent, how can the Atmir Bharat Abhiyan lay the foundation for a stronger Make in India 2.0 in the post COVID-19 world? 
Ah, uh, it's good to good to note and share. Probably all of you must have witnessed yourself in this uh, last the Pauli after so many. Uh, right now I'm in in your touch from Kolkata. So we had our the Pauli in the Kolkata, and after many years, this time traditionally we know that we worship Saraswati and Gan Ganesh Ji on the Pauli puja, and we. Get a idol, idol for the market. After many years, this time <laughs> we have a idol of Ganesh and Lakshmi of a not normal eye eye size. Before that, it used to be all a smaller in disproportionate a smaller size. Why? Because or it it used to come from China. So. How fast this MSME and small sectors or micro sectors they come up to the occasion, and the moment they could learn that this is the essential things and it will be sold and there is a, some import restrictions or anti-import sentiments are prevailing, they come up and they produced uh, crores of idols like this within no 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 time. So this is. This is on 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 their own of the MSME sector. So far as the government initiatives and concerns, I am very happy to say that already government has taken certain initiatives, and that is most likely to give us the result. Uh, but I I can only submit and suggest that uh, government has to be ready to get in touch with the MSME sector. Time to time, at a very, very, very frequent intervals, so that their concerns are solved as soon as possible, as soon as, as soon as they come. Uh, being being from the same sector, uh, I can also suggest uh, that uh, there should be some emphasis on the export and import substitution done by the MSME sectors. There are ways and means for the other sectors and larger sectors to get their Concerns uh, resolved, but it's a uh, very difficult uh, for the smaller MSME sector. Or unfortunately, they probably in lighter, lighter note, I can say they do not have sal salvage and sables. So, so their concerns are very difficult to get addressed. Even uh, we uh, we are exporting almost to almost 12 countries from our company and. Exporting went to the countries like Japan, and we feel that there is so much of restriction from the export, and so much of restriction from RBI. Once you send a project to the outside country, and then after even as sending them a warranty claim or some damages, it becomes a Herculean task for us, and we do not know where to go and how to resolve and how to keep our customers happy. So. This is the one concern. Second concern is the uh, government should also think of the uh, shouldering the responsibility of the making, making the life of MSME sector in their export and import, especially the RBI, that so much of restrictions are there for a smaller company. It's very, very difficult to do the export, exports. Third point I can say that for export and import substitution, the company, any company of any sector, they need to have this R&D, R&D sector. Mostly a small sectors do not spend any money and energy and time in uh, doing some R&D. But whosoever is interested to do and whosoever is capable, capable of doing such things, government should take some initiative so that they can come up with a new, new technology on their own which can substitute these future imports. And thirdly, this whatever the decisions have already been taken and all the decisions which are likely to come in the near future, near future government should take a, an initiative that, uh, that should be come into a faster way. Initiatives are taken uh, because as of now, the, there is a directive uh, that uh, banks should lend lend the loans to the MSME sector on priority and all those things. But on the ground, probably it is not happening or it's happening not up to the content or intent desires. 
these are the four, three, four suggestions I can take that who, who, can, who can support the MSME sector, which is the backbone of the any econ economy, especially it is poor too for the Indian economy, which is growing very, very on a faster speed and which needs to support millions and millions of un, maybe uneducated and without job youngsters. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Singh, uh, for that uh, you know insightful uh, advice, and that's much appreciated. I know we are timed out, uh, but there are a couple of questions coming from uh, larger audience, and it's, it's being put up there. Uh, it's basically related to uh, you know, Mr. Garg, your uh, comment on technology centers and uh, industry. Uh, 4.0 and that's very uh, that's very apt and that's what because when i was looking at data for 250 years to be very honest uh, before industry one started india was something around third position of the top seven countries of that time as we progress uh, industry one two three four now we are seventh uh, in terms of per capita, uh, I mean, uh, there are them, uh, our ranking is much below, but those seven countries, those six countries are ahead of that. Is that uh, something was wrong that uh, we were not able to capitalize on that, and 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 now we are almost on verge of industry 4.0, and that's what basically you talked about. So one question was that this technology center, that's huge investment uh, being planned. Is there a timeline? Uh, for larger people to know that what, when you're planning to be completed and how it can uh, create a larger uh, environment. Uh, and in fact, that could benefit MSME. The second that we are talking about technological revolution, uh, what could be the pot potential bottleneck that can be uh, overcome to ensure that our industry four uh, initiatives are basically well supporting to MSME sector. Yeah, to start with, I would like to uh, reply to Mr. Sanjay Singh's point that uh, the challenges MSMEs face in resolving their issues. So I would just like everybody to kindly uh, take note of it that we have started a portal called champions.gov.in. I'll repeat, champions.gov.in. And we have 64 centers working across the country so anybody can just go on this portal and put his or her complaint and we will try to resolve these complaints quickly. So this is one. Secondly, we are in the ministry uh, now having very uh, dynamically, continuously having dialogue with various associations, various chambers of commerce, so that whatever issues are there, we should be able to try, we should try to sort them out as quickly as possible. So we'll be very happy to remain engaged with you and look forward to listen from you on your problems and we certainly will try to resolve those issues. Uh, that's one point. Now to the question of my Dr. Arun uh, on the technology centers. Now these technology centers, uh, 15 which are to be created at a cost of rupees 3000 crore, 13 have already become functional out of that. And in addition, 120 centers which are to be set up across the country, including 100 in districts, out of that, again, 30 have started functioning, and uh, rest are on the on the uh, you know at the various stages. But we hope that in next two to three years, they start functioning. Now, there's another approach that we have adopted is that centers of excellences. So we are tying up with various IITs, NIITs, other central government bodies like APRIT in Bangalore, <coughs> like IIHR uh, in Bangalore for various other areas and specific sector specific centers of excellence have been created. I'll give example of coir industry. In coir, we have been exporting coir pith. Coir pith is a waste uh, which, was, which was considered as a waste earlier. Now 1100 crore worth export is happening annually. Now worldwide, people are doing more value addition into that and converting into, converting this uh, 1000 crore to 10,000 crore. So we are now strongly working with the industry to do the value addition here itself, so that we take our export from 1,000 crore to 10,000 crore. And for that, we have created three centers of excellence, one with IIT, 
Madras, one with IPRITI Bangalore, and another with uh, IIHR Bangalore, so that various uh, specific products can be created and value addition can happen and, you know, uh, local to global and local, local for local and uh, local to global, we can uh, do both the things. So that's what we are trying to do. And we are uh, uh, not only these in various other sectors also we are creating centers of excellence and we are picking up such sectors which have the potential to grow to 10,000 crore and beyond. So very small sector, Agarbatti. We have been, um, we have a, we have the largest production around 1500 crores uh, annually. And we are trying to see that how can we grow to 1000 crore in this sector. So various raw material production, a lot of raw material are coming from the outside. We are trying to put them inside in the, in the, within the country itself. So that's what we are trying to work. And another point which I would like to just uh, talk about is that on the art in the Bharat. I think that uh, the approach this time is on the Atman Nirbhar Bharat side is to build our own skills, build our own capabilities. And once we have the right skill, right capability, then we are in a right place to take benefit of what is happening globally. And with this approach only, we are trying to create the complete technological infrastructure across the country, obviously provide marketing support and also the financial support. So under this philosophy of, you know, as Honorable PM said that we have to build our own capability so that we can prove ourselves better than anybody else, rather than just putting, you know, any production layer, protectionism or protection layers. So that is the approach I think, and I am pretty sure that this is going to work. And our continuous dialogue, the way we are doing, the way we are interacting today, it was a, a nightmare to talk to 100 people, but today we are able to talk to thousands of people together. And our honorable minister has been talking to many, many more people across the country, across the world. So that kind of connect which has now been created, I think this will this will roll out into much, much more benefit that we are seeing. We're looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gag. And I think that was really, really insightful. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, the person, uh, the people who are basically asking got a wonderful uh, uh, way forward. And uh, of course, they will keep uh, engaged with that uh, approach and champions in fact personally visited on the website i was working so that's really a good initiative by the government of india to ensure that they reach to the larger participant uh, there's one question uh, to uh, uh, i mean in fact i know it timed out but uh, to you uh, dr kathuria is basically if you if my, if you allow i can ask it's a very small question it's i know yeah. so it's basically uh, from a research perspective that question is coming let's say over years, one concern very, very prominent and it's coming up again and again. And I think that that you just serious attention from the financing perspective. I think that that's the core of everything. Uh, financing issues related to MSME. And I also mentioned that. You think from a research side, from a, a overall advisory that what can be done, uh, how private sector can help to ease some of the concerns which we are facing for a, a long point of time. So at least MSME can get enough fund, enough money to move forward. Any any so, any advisory from your side? Yeah. So I think from from a research perspective, you know the MSME or the micro MSME sector is as as has been pointed out, it's a very heterogeneous sector. There are some really small entities which are essentially in the informal sector, and I think unorganized and informal sector and the dominant share of India's uh, micro and small enterprises are in the informal in terms of numbers are in the unorganized and the informal sector. Now, you know, where do these firms or where do these entities go to for getting credit? They certainly don't go to the formal banking system. Uh, they rely on their personal network. Uh, they rely on friends and family. And at most, they would go to the NBFC sector. Uh, we, we know that a lot of loans have been made available to this, this you know, cohort from the NBFC sector, the micro uh, finance institutions. And I think strengthening the microfinance institutions post um, you know, Maligam committee has been a great initiative of the government of India 
uh, to be able to provide loans to such. But I think there will be a multiple. There will be multiple sources of loans to these um, uh, entities in the in the sector, and and some amount of formalization over a period of time will happen, and some of it will be, of course, good. But formalization will take time. But I'm hopeful that, as Mr. Garg has been saying, I'm hopeful that you know MSMEs get the rightful place uh, they deserve in the Indian economy because they do a lot of good service. For the economy, and they should get a good, uh, their rightful place. Finance uh, is only one of the problems that they face. I mean, they they have a multitude of other host of other problems that we've spoken about, and finance getting access to credit is only one of the problems because they have need marketing as well. They need to uh, as well. So uh, I think uh, finance uh, is a problem, and I think uh, as I said. There are multiple sources of, of finance, and some of it, when finance is available, it's available at very high uh, rates of interest, right? especially from the informal market. So that needs to be addressed along with uh, a sort of host of other issues. There's no one magic bullet, from, but from the point of view of, of research, we'd like to see how many SME, small and medium enterprises, and micro enterprises are graduating from the informal sources of funding to formal sources of funding. And what is a good way to, to make that transition happen? I would that that would be an interesting question from a research perspective. No, I'm, I understand, uh, Dr. Kathuria, and that's reality. In fact, I was looking at uh, data that in India, unfortunately, 99% of uh, companies MSME sector, and 94% uh, could be the unorganized sector. And unorganized sector is basically no trail of records, no trail of uh, information. So, uh, I mean, there could be some constraint uh, and that's basically much discussed and deliberated upon. And in fact, thank you, uh, Dr. Kathuria for taking those questions. And with that, uh, you know, I would like to uh, uh, wrap up today's panel discussion. And I'm in fact, I'm grateful and I'm thankful to all our panelists for wonderful session. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gurk. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kathuria. Thank you, Mr. Singh, for all your insightful uh, advice. And uh, I do believe that our participants had a wonderful session. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you, Gurkha. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Kathuria, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Thank you, Mr. Gar. Thank, you. thank you. See you, sir. See you. See you, sir, some, sometime, somewhere. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you. Thank you. I think the last one thing that how vibrant our youth today is that in the current financial year, under the Prime Minister's Employment Guarantee Program, we got 30% more industry setting up proposals. And those proposals, many of these proposals are coming from people who have come back to their villages after this COVID. And they have started functioning also. Their business also started. And this year, the bank finance has also gone by almost 30% more to these, these uh, new units, and they have started very quickly uh, functioning as well. So that is a vibrancy which is happening down in the villages side in the, in the bottom most layer of the country. So I see a lot of uh, new things happening, and I believe we'll be uh, we'll growing much faster, much better in the coming days. Thank you very much. God bless us. No, thank you. And that's what basically I was trying to say that every crisis offers some opportunity. And that's basically now we need to leverage on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. That was a fantastic session, wasn't it? Hope all of you enjoyed it thoroughly. And I'm sure you will be having some fantastic takeaways from the exclusive aspects that were shared on this panel discussion today. Thank you, Dr. Arun Singh. Thank you, esteemed panelists. It was a pleasure listening to you. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to wind up the launch event. It has been an immense pleasure hosting all of you at the Dun & Bradstreet American Express Banking Corporation Business Enterprises of Tomorrow event. And we are grateful to each and every one of you for taking time from your busy schedules and making this a memorable event to remember. And it wouldn't have been a reality without the support of our sponsors. I would like to thank our title partner, American Express Banking Corporation, our presenting partner, AWS, our principal partner, iTelligence, our life insurance partner, LIC of India, our co-partners, William Textiles, Crayon, and CD Asia, and of course, our supporting partner, 
NSIC and definitely we cannot rule out any of our publication partners. Thank you very much. A big thank you to our esteemed dignitaries and speakers for their presence and their insights. I would like to thank each and every one of them again. To begin with, our star speaker today, our chief guest Sri Nitin Gadkariji, Mr. Julian Prava, Mr. Avinash Gupta, Ms. Megha Chopra, Mr. B. Raghavendran, Mr. Anil Rao. Thank you very much for gracing this event and on behalf of everyone out here, I extend my thanks and deep gratitude for making this event a success. Again, on behalf of my team and Dun and Bradstreet, I wish each and every one of you a safe and prosperous year ahead. Let's take a pledge to make India rise again and make India Atmanirbhar. With this, this is Naina Acharya, your host for the day, signing off. Thank you very much and stay safe.